Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. Let's join guest minister Scott Behrman for today's message. saw in a couple of those shots was um, you saw some empty land that uh, was being um, purchased and, and obtained to build church buildings. And then also what you saw when the, some of the distribution was we were working with Samaritan's Purse uh, on a distribution location. And um, it's really interesting how Samaritan Purse has really made an impact through their aid as well. And um, the networking that is going on through that. And um, then you saw uh, people out in the forest, and we actually had church out in the forest because it was too dangerous to be in any of the buildings. And so we found a beautiful place. It was like a, like a cathedral, natural cathedral. And I, as we were having church, it was like being like uh, back in Bible times. We felt like it was like a the Apostle Paul or somebody, you know, standing up and all these people are just standing around or sitting around. But um, uh, also we had, we had a couple water buffalo walk through our church service. And that, that was a first. Um, and they weren't friendly. They were, they were kind of mean. Um, but we still had church and it was good. Um, what I'd like to share with you uh, just for a few moments here, is um, the words of Jesus. And, you know, his words, if we obey him, if we, you know, we respond to him just with a simple faith and trust, and uh, he's, it'll, it'll help us. It'll go well with us when we do that. And um, the first scripture I want to share with you is Matthew 24, 14. And... Uh, Jesus says, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. There's two two word phrases here that I'd like to point out. One of them is the whole world, the whole world and all nations. He says, this gospel shall be preached to the whole world. And all nations, it will be testimony to. You know, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Romans 1 says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. What is that? Jesus Christ, Son of God, come to earth to take our sins, bore our sins in his own body, When he hung on a cross, he died and paid the sacrifice for the punishment of our sin. He was buried and rose again. It's pretty simple, pretty simple message. Yet in that, as I even just spoke that, the power of God was released. You say, wow, those were very simple words. But when somebody can believe that, there is the power that transforms a life that has been separated from Christ, from God, 
from God's original plan and purpose. And there is a reuniting through a life-giving presence of God who comes in and makes you a new creation in Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. Now, this message must be preached in all the world, the whole world, to all nations, and then the end will come. We know the end is near, don't we? Fewer and fewer areas in this world today are unreached. The church is growing, it's expanding. It's not an organization, it's, a, it's an organism. And it is growing. Amen? And he says this, he goes, it will be preached as a testimony and then the end will come. Sometimes we think, well, the end has got to come. You just watch the news. The Lord come quickly. Well, you know what? He's not going to come because things are bad. He's going to come because the gospel's been preached. Yeah. Amen? Another scripture is in Acts 1.8. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You'll receive power after that the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, we know that the Holy Spirit, He is our friend. He is our comforter. He is our helper. I'm so thankful for the presence of the Holy Spirit, aren't you? I'm so thankful for times of refreshing and, and the times that, man, you know, you feel His strength and it helps you in times of weakness. But you know what? He comes on you for a kingdom purpose that connects your witness to the whole world. He said, you will be witnesses unto me. Now, a witness in a court of law, he tells, a witness will tell what has been said, done, or what has happened because he has seen it with his eyes, experienced it. Do you know what? That's what God wants to do through the work of the Holy Spirit is he wants you to be a witness unto him. That means that you are experiencing God happenings in your life. Amen? He's coming through for you. There's breakthroughs. There's, there's provision. There's healing. There's, there's um, deliverance. There's victory in your life. You're able to walk away from life-controlling habits because you have experienced the power of the Holy Spirit on your life. He says, you will be witnesses unto me. You know what? Some, the world doesn't need just a hearsay gospel. Well, I hear it was about what God has done in somebody else's life. They need someone who has experienced Christ himself. Amen? And that's what the work of the Holy Spirit will do. He'll come on you to make you a witness and I like this. He says, you know, he talks about the regions, you know, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. There's, there's a whole representation of the locations of the expanse of our witness. And you notice it, he didn't say just Jerusalem, but he talked about the ends of the earth. Do you know that you and I are really... When these words were spoken, here in Menominee, whatever was happening at that time, it was the uttermost parts of the earth. Come on now, right? This, I am so thankful that you and I are, are products of the Great Commission, of people going. The words of Jesus were adhered to, followed. Some people go, okay, I'm going to take the gospel. And because of their obedience, you and I are sitting here today in this church. I heard the gospel. My dad gave his heart to the Lord because somebody chose to share their faith with him. And so, you know, it's a very natural, organic thing for us to advance the kingdom of God just by being a witness. A testimony is so powerful. Amen? 
Jesus said this as well. In Matthew 9.35, it says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, healing every disease and sickness. Now, these next words are so precious. I love this. It says, and when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. See, there is a time of harvest that we are living in right now, and the laborers are those who are his witnesses, those who will go. And what I want to share with you today is that you can go. You can be a part, not just locally here in Menominee, but your effect, your witness can touch the whole world. Even if you don't get a plane ticket and go to another land, you being a part of Liberty, Liberty Christian Center is the organism that will touch the world. And I want to encourage you with that. You are a missionary. Our slogan, our motto is this, everyone a missionary. Say that with me, would you? I'm a missionary. Say it again. Now I'd venture to say that some of you, that was the very first time you've ever said that. But it's true. You are a missionary. You know, um, if you're just watching the news, you can be discouraged. Maybe some of the things that have happened even the last couple days. But I don't want you to get discouraged. I don't want you to be sad. I don't want you to lose hope. Because really, we're on the winning team. We're not going to lose. We're going to win. Amen? You know, I want to just share some things, some, some broad statistics of, of uh, what's happening in the world. Do you know that there is an amazing harvest that's taken place in Asia, in South, South America, in Africa? And the church is growing, multiplying by leaps and bounds. You won't hear that on the evening news. Even though the church in other parts of the world is, is declining, stagnant, you know, there are Christians in every nation today. They might be few, they might be, um, you know, they might be flying under the radar, they're not really in public view, but the church is alive in every nation of the world today. Amen. Evangelical Christianity has grown faster than any other world religion or world movement or religious movement. Pentecostals and other charismatic movements have grown beyond expectation. The fastest growing churches are among the Pentecostals worldwide. Many of the world's least reached peoples have received the good news in just recent years. In many cases, people, nations who didn't have any known believers 10, 20 years ago, now have churches that are growing and are thriving. There are, mission, there are, there are nations in this world now that are sending missionaries. In fact, the United States has been replaced as the leading, and, and Britain too, Britain and the United States at one time were the leaders in sending missionaries into the world. Today we've been replaced. Nations like, like Ethiopia, Nigeria, Brazil, the Philippines, South Korea are sending missionaries by the droves into the world. Amen? In fact, even America, we're, we're getting missionaries from some of these nations who are coming to the United States. Man? See, the gospel is not a white man's religion. It's not just a Western. It's not just a British religion. It's a world. Jesus died for the world. Amen? And so, 
You know, Bryce, my, our son Bryce, he's working with World Compassion, and um, is, that's Terry Law's ministry, he's out of Tulsa, and they're going into Syria, where these, Syrian, where these refugees are from Iraq, the Kurdish people, and um, we've heard wonderful stories. Like in a Syrian refugee camp, there was a Muslim man who gave his heart to the Lord and immediately began to tell people. And before long, he had over 200 people who were coming to him, and, he formed a, and they formed a church. Here, he, he had no theological training, biblical training, but God touched him, and he's a pastor. In one of these, these uh, refugee areas, amen, I met a, a, a Muslim convert to Christianity just a, a few weeks ago at a missions conference. Young man, he's only probably in his early 30s. And he told me, I said, how'd you get saved? How did you find Christ? And he goes, I was just hungry for God. And I was just praying. And the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. And he said, the way of Christ is the truth. And he, he didn't even want to hear it. And as he continued to just be in the presence of God, he opened up his heart and received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Now he said his heart went about a month ahead of his head because his head was saying, what are you doing? You're going to get your head cut off. But I tell you what, there was no fear in this man, young man, about being a Christian. Amen? I asked him, I said, what is the key to, to reaching a Muslim? How, how, how would I reach a Muslim? He said, don't try to proselytize them. Don't try to win them to Christ. Love them. Find a way to serve them. Be their friend. Care about them. You know, there's so many things that you know, we hear in the news and, and, and we can put up this prejudice wall where if we see anybody that even looks like a Muslim, we, we can have an opinion and form and, and be very, very closed to them. Listen, church, you, you're going to make a difference when you just let the love of Christ flow out. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I venture to say there's probably Muslims here in this city. And they just, need, they just need somebody to just show them Christ. Amen. You know, uh, I, I grew up in church, and uh, my dad is a pastor, and, and um, great church, great family. I'm so thankful for the heritage I had. But you know what? I didn't want anything to do with ministry. I, I didn't... My dad, you know, I, I'd see him preach, and they'd say, you're going to be just like your dad. And, and you know how kids can be a little embarrassed of their parents? You know, and that's what I was. I was a little embarrassed. I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to be like him. And it was a little bit of uh, reject, you know, just rejecting that. And so um, I just, I, I remember just having a very selfish idea of what my life should be like. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to play football in college, go to this college in, in the mountains, that we're from Colorado, and um, I, I wanted to get a Jeep, a CJ7, because those were cool back then, and then get some snow skis, and I just, I'd live on the slopes. And that, that was my life plan right there. And... Uh, you know what? I didn't go off to college that, that week, that uh, fall. It was a weird th thing because I couldn't do it. Everything was set for me to do it, to go. But you know what? As soon as I made that choice not to go to college, another opportunity opened up for me. And it was to go into Africa. I went into Central Africa in the Congo. I, I served a missionary for several months there. And you know what? the selfish blinders I had in my eyes of just what I just wanted to do just for me were taken off and God just opened up 
a different worldview to me of the people on the other side on another continent that he loved. And they were responding to the gospel. And there were pastors and there were, there were kids, there were mothers and daughters and, and they all loved Christ. And I went, wow. There's so much more than my little world. And it changed me, and it changed my life. It changed the direction of my life. I began to pursue Christ, not, not worried about if I was going to be like my dad or not. Right? It's funny, it's, I'm probably so much like my dad now. <laughs> but I, I think it's cool now. I just hope I can continue to be like him. But um, <clears throat> I want to share with you just a, a phrase And I want this to be a challenge to you. I want this as it challenges me. Um, This is not new message to you, I know. But think of this phrase right here, and it's a mission motto. And it is this, the supreme task of the church is the evangelization of the world. The supreme task is not just a Bible school. Bible schools are great. It's not just a Sunday school program. It's not just a Sunday church service. It's not just small groups. And sometimes we can think, well, this is all that church is about. It's not about just good music and worship. The supreme task of the church is the evangelization of the world. That is our supreme task. And every one of us are missionaries. Amen? So I want to look at each of these three words as we're closing. And I want to start with the first word, world. World. As we read that scripture in Acts 1.8, it says, You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Sometimes we can just be Jerusalem minded and the scope of what we think our influence is is just very local sometimes it's just even our families sometimes it's just it's sad to say but it can be just these four walls this is what we're about but the gospel is not just a local gospel a lot of the, some people will, will have a broader uh, scope and, and uh, look at their, their circle of influence. And so they'll go out to their county or their region and they'll have more of a community thrust. But you know, it's not to be just a community thrust. Some people will go to their state. So well, we're called to this state. But we're not to be just called to this state. Even though we are. Some people go, well, well we're, we're just going to focus on the United States. But you know, the gospel isn't just for one nation. Some people even go bigger and go, you know, we'll embrace the continent. Or even the hemisphere that we're in. But that's not enough. He said, to the uttermost parts of the earth, the whole world. See, God sent his son for the world. Jesus died, shed his blood, gave his life for the world. Amen? The next word I'm going to share with you is supreme. See, we have wonderful ministry opportunities within the church that build the body of Christ. They build the body of Christ for the supreme purpose of the evangelization of the world. Amen? You may be a Sunday school teacher. I remember <clears throat> you know, having wonderful people in our church who brought me up. It wasn't just my parents, but godly examples, men, women. Do you know that you're, you're such an integral part of this church? You're, what you bring to this church goes beyond what you can even imagine. 
even to the kids that come in, you're creating an environment whereby other people can receive Christ and receive from Him. You're a part. It doesn't just happen from the, the platform. You're creating this environment. But I remember this. I remember how important it was for the expression of world evangelism to be coming out of different facets of our church. Our Sunday school teachers, our children's church, our youth ministers, the times we'd have missionaries in in the church, it kind of got put into the DNA of us, of our church, that we, we have a supreme task. And it's not just, for me, it was Burlington, Colorado. It's not just Burlington. We're going to touch the world. So it's not just Menominee, but it is the world, and it is the supreme task. When you do that, it sets a course of sowing and reaping into your church. All of a sudden, everybody is sowing for a kingdom purpose. They're coming, serving in children's ministry, serving on the worship team. They're serving there, in here and there for a grand kingdom purpose, not just a local purpose. And you're sowing seeds in that kingdom purpose. And you know what happens when you sow? You're going to get a harvest back in your house. Amen? Amen. Which brings us to the last word that I want to bring out in this slogan here. The supreme task of the church is world evangelism. World evangelization. The church the supreme task of the church, the church, you are the church, you are the body. It's not left to Scott and Sue. Oh, there are missionaries. No, you are the missionaries. God will do more with us. You know what, when we go to Nepal, we are ministering to missionaries, not just nationals there. We're putting into them the vision. They are missionaries. And you know what? They are going. They're going into China, in Tibet. Now, you may not want to go overseas. That shoe may not fit on your foot. That's okay. You might think, you know what? I cannot handle spicy food. I'm with you. I got to be careful with what I eat. But you might be, you know, just give me a cheeseburger and I'll be at church every Sunday. I'll serve and you know what I'll give. And you know, um, there's no pressure to do anything other than what God puts on your heart. But you do need to be challenged with the the elevation of this call. How, how, mag, how magnificent it is and that you have a part in it. Now, if you can't go, you can send and you can pray. And you can be a part of a church like this that has a heart for the world. And you just be in your part, just doing your part. It's going to get to where this church, I believe, has people in here who will, who will touch the world. That, this, na that this, this church will touch the nations. I believe it. Because it's God's plan. It's just natural. It's just the way it should be. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for listening to Liberty Christian Center's podcast. To partner with this ministry or for any additional information, please visit libertychristiancenter.org.